Hallelujah. 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 That's all right. I like that. We can. There's an affirmation that we can do all things. Hallelujah. Your sure Hamashiach that gives unto us the Koach, the strength of Yah's power to prevail against all the opposition of darkness through adversities and trials through what the Torah would call the za or the straits the narrow place of oppression the narrow place whereby there is no escape unless we call upon the name of Yahshua HaMashiach that is what tribulations is all about that we are going to not only codify, but qualify and quantify whom we truly trust in. So he's bringing us to a time whereby there shall be great oppression. We can see the zero of the seed of that already in the earth, Yisraya. Our minds are constantly bombarded with every kind of seductive, demonic power that one could ever imagine the lines of what is sadika and what is hell evil or rah we are seeing even that line being blurred israel so what is right to do we're calling it wrong and what is wrong to do we're calling it right and what is evil and sadistic we're calling it tav and what is tav uh, and so deep before here, we are calling it evil. Yeah. So the lines are being blurred today because of the unwillingness of the heart of man. And it begins in Behat Yisraya, those that he has granted the substance of his strength. Well, what is substance? It is the composition or the ingredients of material that produces the ultimate end. So you have rubber, you have steel, you have petroleum to make the tire. And we have the mitzvah, the commands of Yah. We have his chukhamah, his status. We have the mutha, the instructions of Yah, to give us the composition to build us that we will be in the image, walking, talking, and living uh, in the image of Yahshua HaMashiach, who is the power of the righteousness of Torah revealed unto Yisrael. We cannot say that we are more than conquerors. When one is more than or rab, one has the excellence of your strength. One has the superiority of your strength. One has the might of the power of the testimony of Yahshua. It is vivid. It is alive. And it is robust in that individual. And if we don't have that, we are not more. We can pretend. We can subscribe that adjective to our demeanor. But we know that we are deceiving our own minds. For the heart of man is deceitful above all things. And it is desperately wicked. We got to deal with the roots of our own love, Yisraya. We must get to the root cause. Whether we truly admire him, or we admire ourselves and our own deeds and our own actions above the mandates of Almighty Yah. Shaul did not lie to us. Yet in all these things... And he brought out one that was great, significant. He used the word uh, distress or the czar in the midst of great distress, in the captivity of bondage, in the stress of the oppressor. He said, these things shall not separate me from uh, the love of Yah, from the love of Torah. And if we truly love the Torah of Yah, there should be an abundance of the activity of the fruit of Yah in our lives. You cannot give attention to a fruit tree in the latter end. It is a constant pruning and taking care 
that it may have longevity, it may have life, uh, and out of that tree there is fruit to consume, uh, the peri uh, that we may delight in. Do we truly delight in the substance of our bosom, Yisrael? Are we full of pretense and falseism, uh, full of hypocrisy, that we believe that we are satisfied, knowing forthrightly with all honesty uh, that we are not? There's nothing that excels us and causes us to get excited about Yah. And cause us to express unto him how profoundly glad and told we are for all of his great riches of this day. Before we journeyed to the tabernacle, I was listening to a song man was singing. And the old man, the Zachin, said, he sounds almost like Jane Brown. I said, well, he was somewhat patterning himself to that degree. You could tell he was an old schooler. But he said that the first thing that I do when I get up in the morning, I cry, Toda ya, I barach you ya, for all of your blessings. And he was doing it in that type of format that James Brown, he was hollering and doing all of the drama. But I can understand the depths of his statement. The first thing. So he grants unto us a set apart day above all days. The Shabbat. That we may have a Shabbaton. That there is no labor. There is no attachment to anything that is worldly. We abandon all the cares of our flesh. We impel, we destroy, we impel. It is to tear out anything that is offensive unto Yah. We impel the desire of our flesh. And then we become immersed. We become immersed in the living water, the Torah of Yah. That we immerse our minds in the Torah of Almighty Yah. That should be the standard of Yisra'ya. And if we do not develop that, we're not going to be even a conqueror, Yisra'ya. A conqueror is a hasak. He is one that has the power to prevail. He is hardened. She is hardened by the, the, the tribulations and trials of, that they know that there is no other one to trust in but the Most High. One's heart is set right. One's mind is set upon the things that are above and not on the things that are sensual upon this earth, Yisraya. And that's that spirit of one that is a conqueror. And we are more than a conqueror. That we have the abundant superior skill set in the ability to fight the battles of Almighty Yah. And never lose one battle. Has he ever lost a battle? He has never more lost a battle. And a greater is the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. And he overcame the very powerful opposition of darkness. He overcame death and the grave. Sheol. For his body did not uh, set corruption or corruption uh, did not set in that body. Although he bore the sins of Yisraeli and the world uh, in that body of clay. That is a representation of what is in this body of clay. As our Zohkin brought out to us, it must be uh, impelled. You must destroy the lust. The affections of the flesh, they must be destroyed, Yisraeli. And if they're not destroyed, uh, that is the power that shall rise up. Against the testimony, Yoshua HaMashiach will rise up blatantly. We never find ourselves rising up, do we? Sure we do. We find ourselves resorting to our flesh. Don't you find yourself falling back into the delusion of your corrupt ways often? You're joyful today, this moment. And the next moment, you're moody as hell. You have this spree this moment. And everybody is corrupt except you. 
what damn defiance of Yah and wickedness that is so corrupt, so unpronounced, that we have done more wickedly than our forefathers. I will continue as I said, and I'm going to conclude today, whether you're with me or you're not, all right? It is time that Yisra'ya, we must be taught the truth of Yah. It must burn in our minds, in our inward parts. We hear today and we forget the next second. We don't forget trash and folly and gossip. We can sit all damn day and rehearse folly and stupidity, lies and corruption. But yet we're not energized to discuss Torah. To discuss those things that enable us to press beyond a mind, this mind of enmity against Yah. And the reason it is a vital enemy of Yah is because it is not subject unto the Torah of Yah. And Yah confirms neither indeed can it be subject unto the Torah. Our minds in the state that they're in, they're not subject unto the Torah. They're subject unto the Torah of the law of the flesh, which is a law of sin, as Zachim Yaramiya brought out concerning Shaul in one of his messages. That there are two laws that work within me. The law of sin... There's a will to uh, press on in the Torah and there's a will to obey the law of sin. So the Kardamon is not subject. It is an enemy of Yah. And the reason it is, it is not subject unto the Torah. It is not, it doesn't delight in the Torah. And our minds do not delight in the Torah. You feed us with folly, we delight all day long. We will sing, we will, we will congregate and gather when it's time to gather in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, there is not that great inspiration among Yisrael. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about those that say they love him and care for him. And we really just don't give a damn. I want to again retrace some of the verses. One in particular that I began to speak on on last Shabbat. We greet you all that have joined us for this live Shabbat broadcast. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take a position of comfort here somewhat today. I'm going to sit down with you. How about that? So I may teach you what the Torah says and I may rise up in my discuss with what's happening in the body of Yisrael. I I'm not concerned about what's happening in the world, but among his people, the house of Yisra'ya, his elect, his chosen. Yahshua says, Abba, I pray not for the world, but those that you have given unto me, I pray for them that you would shema, you would keep them. Guard them, your heads about them. I pray for your people, your elect, and all that you have surrendered unto me and called to hear my voice. I've lost none except the son of perdition, he that was destined for darkness and hell, he that was of the Ruach, the spirit of Isav. Bound by the chains of darkness. He was not meant to inherit the kingdom blessings. He was not meant to understand the power of the kingdom riches of Almighty Yah. That he may be made free from the powers of darkness. What is our minds shackled by? Jehu says that we are robbed. We are more than conquerors. We have an excellent superior quality. It has to be developed though. And there is only one way it is developed. And in the book of Ezra, he speaks of that. But one thing I want to, uh, I do not feel justified because uh, I did not give us enough insight uh, on that simple phrase, rap or more than. 
that we may understand the magnitude of that Yisra'ya in our definitive or our defining of a word uh, we tend to define it by our limited resources uh, of what we call our intelligentsia and we are not intelligent people we are ignorant we are not a learned people uh, we have learned to do evil but to do sadiq and to do the righteous things we have not learned Yisra'ya. our children know how to rebel from birth you don't even have to teach that you don't have to teach that nature to your children it's there and we have learned to do evil and we have learned how to live corruptly and it's not of Yah and for us to understand the speech of Yah we must Yisra'iyah examine the patterns whereby the speech is used if Shaul says yet in all these things again turn quickly to Romeo, Romans chapter 8 verse 37 when he says nay in all these things and in verse 35 he begins to address all the things there is one particular thing in the thing of Sarah of distress in Romans 8 35 but he says yea in all these things we are more rab with exceeding exceedingly abundance of Torah riches and knowledge we are more than hazak we are more than conquerors through him through him through all Maria that loved us through him how do we understand his mind unless we understand his testimony that's why this is a nation we are people but we have no ed we have no witness of his ed earth his testimony because our lives are not worth a damn they're so full of hypocrisy and so our lives do not witness of the power of his truth. The same precious Ak I was talking to on Thursday. He said to me, Reak, he said, I am a mess. And I said, We all are a mess, my friend. He said, But I'm a mess. And I know. That I need this in order to bring any kind of resolution, any type of promising of truth in me, I need to hear the fire that breathes from the lungs of Almighty Yah. His people are a mess. We are in a mess, Yisrael. And we look at an image that is so corrupt in our reflections, in our mirrors, and we speak highly of ourselves. But we must look in the reflection of the mirror of the Torah to find those things that are disgusting in us and what y'all disapprove of. And it reflects in our activities and the activities of our minds. So I responded we're all in a mess, my friend. And that's why y'all must raise up the Nobi, the true messengers. I am not a prophet. I am not a Nobi. And neither are you that are listening today either, my friend. You must raise up the Nobi, the man that is of significant skill set. His man labors in the Torah of Yah. And what he speaks, it reflects the power. Of the dynamics of Almighty Yah. He's not afraid of wives, son, children, grunt. He's not afraid of any man when it comes to reflecting what is Sadiq before Almighty Yah. And he doesn't spare the emotions of any man, any woman, rich, poor, great, lowly. He doesn't spare that. He reflects the image of Yahshua HaMashiach. We're just not there, Yisra'ya, 
And the only way that mind is going to speak, you must raise him up. He must have more than the average individual. That's how we think of ourselves. We equate ourselves equal in the knowledge of those that labor intensely in the Torah of Yah. And we think we possess what they possess. And we are damn fools, Yisrael. He must have more. His message must be profound. Jau says here again in Romeo 8.37 Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors in him, through him, by the power of him that achav, that loved us. We are trying to, as a thief, in into the power of Yah, we're trying to come another way. And it's not going to work, Israel. We are more than a conqueror. We are rab. We have the abundance of Torah knowledge. We have the excellence and the skillfulness of Torah revelation. We have the profoundness of the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach that lights up our countenance. And because he is alive in us, and we live, but we look like dead people. We're dead. And the reason we are dead, because of the trespasses of our sins, we're full of sins. I want to give us some, what, of a simplicity of the knowledge of that phrase, more than, rab. The exceeding abundance, the excellence of the abundance the excellence of the strength of greatness, of the greatness of his power. We are more than conquerors through him, through him, through Almighty Yah in the power of Yeshua HaMashiach that loved us through him. So his rap is exceeding. It is abundant. It is beyond numeric expression. And yet I want to try to give us some kind of understanding and idea as to what more than is. And I would have begun here in the book of Second Debri Chayim. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 25. Second Chronicles verse 25. And I want to begin here in verse 25 as the messenger of Yah, Yahazael, as he spoke unto Jehoshaphat, Yisrael, in the midst of all of the decadence of wickedness of sin, he sat with the counsel of the wise, and he began to speak as an orator of Yah. That is why if we believe the prophet, if we do what the Nobi says, then shall we prosper. We shall have the jalak. We shall increase in our wisdom and our knowledge. We shall increase in our confidence, in our riches, in the wealth of the knowledge of your Torah. Not these damn false dogs. Not the damn false dogs. Not the wicked perverts, but if we truly believe what the Nabi says, so shall we prosper. So the words were sent unto you, Jehoshaphat. And it says in verse 25, And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away, they had been engaged in a battle with Ammon, and the children of Moab, Ammon and the children of Moab. And when they came to take away the spoils or, or the riches of them, they found among them in rub, in abundance, much. There was greatness. I want to clear something in our conscience. More than. Listen. He said, both rechush or riches properties and goods and things to satisfy the appeal of the eyes with the dead bodies and also precious jewels which they strip off for themselves more than they could carry 
away. It was so much. It was so much that they were three days in gathering. Did not our Zakin Yaramiya point out to us after three days? There were three days. He gathered all that was significant in that body in the tomb in three days. That on the fourth day it shall give us power. I will, I will bring some constitution to that as well. But as Zakin brought out constantly, uh, he reverberated. He tried to drive that into our conscience. Uh, after three days, we shall rise. And we see the abundance more than the power of the kingdom bestowed upon us. We saw the riches of that power. We saw the wealth of that power. We saw the strength of that power, Yisrael. We saw the magnitude. And so by the command of Yah, by the will of Almighty Yah, when they subdued the children of Moab and Ammon, there was so much that was, it was beyond more than, more than they, they could carry. And in three days as they loaded uh, the wares upon the, be the, the, the beasts of burden, uh, it took three days. To carry it out. It's going to take three days to get this damn mess out of us. Yeah. That's why Shaul says in the midst of the czar, in the midst of the distress, I'm still more than a conqueror. You're going to have to be more than what we are now. We're going to have to measure more than what we are measuring up to now. We're going to have to have more than than we do now. We're going to have to have more substance that abides in us now, Yisra'iah. It must be superior. It must be without doubt. It must be beyond the ability of the world to lay hold onto it. And to subdue us of it. And yet the world's power subdue us. And bring us subjected unto its will, its laws, and its wicked practices. That we lust like the world. We go like the world. We can't have enough like the world. We're not satisfied even having food and raiment. We're still discontented. It is not of Yah. It took them three days. With all of the substance. More than more than it says more than more than they could carry away they were there three days in gathering of the spoil it was so much it was rob we're much more than conquerors we are the hazak we are those that are strengthened by him that loves us Greater is his power that is in us. What is that power? The same love he loved us. We love him. How do we show the excellence of that love? Uh, that we have an obedience unto the Torah of Almighty Yah. We keep his mitzvah. The mitzvah. It is the code of Yah's wisdom. Uh, this is what opened the doors unto the ordinance and the statutes uh, And the wisdom of Yah. We must love the mitzvah. We cannot put a damn God before Yah. We cannot put a damn Lord. We cannot create a damn image of a damn faggot God before it. Yah. That's the God of this nation. It's a damn faggot. That's why they're trying to blur the, the, the very substance of a man today. They talk about the feminine side of a man. We have no damn feminine side. If anything, a woman has a masculine side. She was made from the man. I will man. Give a damn how the enemy tries us. The man did not come from the woman. The woman came from the man. That's what these damn corrupt minds are saying today. A side of tenderness come from Yah. Come from Yah. Not from some feminist side. That's why the enemy is destroying the homes. Uh, and having the women trying to teach the men what love is. Uh. And that's why their boys are feminine with their slacks dropping off their ass. Skin tight like a little faggot. Dressing your sons like freaks. And your daughters like butch bull daggers. The 
They had more than they could even imagine. It was so much that they had that three days were not enough. We got so many and so much in us. Three days is not going to be enough. The fourth day, hallelujah. After the third day, the sun shined, didn't it? He's going to have to shine. He's going to have to rise in us, Yisraya. And that's a fact. If you think that everything is not pointed, everything is not important for this hour, everything that is said, you're wrong. That's why we as messengers, we must labor in the book. We cannot be superficial in our approach. We must take a serious nature when it comes to this. That reflects in your actions, your activities, and even your issues activity. I will, man. The next verse is said, and on the fourth day, the next day, when the sun shall arise and shine, and on the fourth day, they assemble themselves in the valley of Berechiah, in the blessings of the place of blessings. They assemble themselves in the presence of God in the valley of Berechiah, and there they Berechiah. Therefore, the name of the same place is called the valley of Berechiah, even unto this yom. They gather themselves in the place of Berechiah because there was much. We are more, we are rab, we, are, we, we have the abundance of your skill. We have the abundance of the wisdom of Yahshua HaMashiach. He has not hidden anything from us. If it's hidden from you, Yisrael, it's because the damn God of this world has blinded your eyes. That you should not see unless you believe. And that you should be your shock. You should be delivered from the powers of your own bondage. The enemy has blinded your mind. It is your own corner mind that has blinded your mind. That you cannot see the revelation of your Yeshua HaMashiach. All you see is your revelation. What is revealed in you. What is important unto you. It is called the valley of Merechiah. We're in the valley of Berechiah. The blessings, not of man, but the blessings of Almighty Yah. On the fourth day, the sun shall shine. We're more than conquerors. And he carried the abundance of our sins in his body. More that his body was marred, it was disfigured. That is what marred him. It was not as much as the stripes because by them we are healed. We are set free. We are made free from under the captivity of this uh, the oppression and depression uh, in the land of captivity. Uh, this nation, this united demonic powers uh, of darkness is the land of captivity. Uh, it can captivate the minds of your children and your mind. They had more than. We are more than. Hazach, conquer us through him that loved us. More than. You all can add that verse to that singing as well. Don't get so rigid we sing it the same way every time. You can sing that, my Yosipia, 25, 100 ways as much as the Torah of Yah express. Hallelujah. What I want to do is get a consciousness of what more than Rab. I want you to understand the power of that, Israel. Three days, my. And there was more than enough for the whole house of Israel. There's more than enough in this book for all of us to live rich, powerfully rich, with the substance of Torah. That we said, feed me, ya until I want no more. You can't get full. Because each bite fills you the more. And every time you take a bite, you get fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. That's what we need, Yisraya, more than. If there was one that could speak. On the significance of more than, his name was Eob, and his name implies, hate it. Sonye, that's what the name Eob implies. Hate it. He was hated of Hashem 
but he gives us great insight as we as a nation of people that even in the midst of all of our complaining that Yah is not near his house he is because that's why he corrects Yisrael that's why he chasten us that's why he speaks his musa, his counsel of correction and chastisement unto us as a people. And he speaks out of the agony of his great plight. That the disease that had consumed the wheel, the streets of the power of his flesh did not death take control of the flesh of Yahshua HaMashiach. It was only by the power of the Ruach after three days. The Ruach of Yahweh. And that same Ruach that raised him up shall raise us up as well, Yisrael. We must be filled with the Ruach of Omani Yam. These words I speak unto you today, they are life, they are Ruach, they are spirit. And they are the life, the high. This is what produced life in us. It is the substance of life. And everything that is living, there are certain things that it must have in order to live. They must constantly be fed. And we must be fed the Torah of Yah. Ejob speaks so profoundly in the book of Job 23, verse 12. He says unto Yah, neither have I gone mush. I have not backslid on you, Yah. Job, Eob, 23 and verse 12. <clears throat> he said, I have not gone back from the mitzvah. We're guilty of that, are we not? We've gone back on the mitzvah. Zachah Shabbat, Jema Chadosh. We have gone back from remembering the Shabbat and keeping it set apart. We have gone back from taking the name. We should not take the name of Yah, His Hashem, in Shev. And he that does it or practice that will not be held guiltless. I don't give a damn if it's your grandmother 99.9 .9 of your mother or your relatives or your kinsmen. It makes no difference at all. They're not going to be held Guiltless. That's why we must have this name in the pure consciences. That's why when Yakahan there on Mount Sion Tizayon, he saw the 144,000. They were cleaned from the world's cares and the world's desire. They were pure. That is the epitome of Yisraya. That's the strength of Yisraya. Having his father's, his Abba. Name Hashem, Khatab, written, uh, written in the rush, uh, in the forehead. His name must be in a rush. And we speak his name when we don't even call his name. Our actions speak his name when we never speak his name. And that's the truth. And men will see, they will see the difference. And that's a fact, Israel. He says, Neither have I gone back or mush backslidden uh, from your commandments. Uh, the code of wisdom, that's what this is. His mitzvah, that is the code of his wisdom. His understanding, when you experience the love of his mitzvah, you experience the mind of Almighty Yahweh. That's what you experience. That's why you have these damn dogs today talking about, you don't need Torah. They, what? These are damn wicked children of hell. The children of bondage. What did Yahshua speak from? He showed us the complete power. Of Torah, even in the midst of flesh, showed us what Yah wrote on stones and what those men wrote on the on the straws, what he had written in the heart of Yisrael from the beginning. I'll break it down, don't worry. I know I will not finish it all today, but I will finish it one day. I never finish on anything I preach, teach. You don't have to like my hollering. It makes no difference. I'm going to holler. Eob said, neither have I gone back from your mitzvah of your lips, of his lips. I have not turned, mush, to backslide, to withdraw myself, to turn myself away from his commandments. He says this, I have 
esteem. I have lifted up. I've exalted your divarim, your words more than. I've exalted your words more than. Can you miss in the? Can you imagine or sense the miss of the great zah, the great trial of great affliction? Yet in the midst of that, he said, I have esteem. I have lifted up. I've exalted. I have reverence. Your Torah more than. We are more than conquerors. Yeah. He's have esteem your word more than. Do we as a nation of people esteem the Torah of Yah more than? The, but it's going to take three days. The matter of fact, three and a half days. You're going to esteem his Torah, he says, more than the, my necessary foods. I've esteemed your Torah more than my own desire, my own passion, my own purpose for life. I've esteemed your divarim, your word, your speech, the abundance of your word more than, more than, more than. We must esteem his word more than we esteem the circumstances or even our flesh because we are not more than conquerors. It is a beautiful phrase that they use in their, in their alluring analogy to draw people. More than a conqueror. There's a whole house there in the city of Charlotte. That's their theme. You are more than conquerors. And the women dress like dirty whores. Faggot men. Butch bull dagger women. And the trifle of his little soothing medicine to keep them in the darkness of the dungeons of their sin. He's a damn liar. They're not conquerors. I will show you what we have to conquer above all things. And there's only one power that gives us the ability to overcome and to conquer. That's why the enemy keeps our minds away from Torah. That's why we can't sit and listen to a man like Zachin, Yerabeah, Yisrael. We don't want to listen to men today. We don't want to be taught. I esteem your word. Do we truly do that more than, more than Ram? With greater superiority, reverence and praises than I do my own necessary food. Do we praise the word of Yah like that? Is this word in our minds in the morning, in the noon day, in all day? Do we lift our voices to Hashem? Do we look up and, and beckon for our redemption to draw nigh? Do we do that? No, we don't do that. And it took an agony. It took his flesh being impaled and rottening on his body. And this stench of our flesh, it is a rotten Wicked, maggot, infested piece of stench. He says it's going to take three days for the skin worms to eat it up. But the maggots are going to consume it. The maggots are going to consume it. And those three days, is, uh, it is uh, it, uh, the number three is the significance of the, of the num numerics of, uh, of man. The inner man is coming to an end. The inner of a power of flesh is coming to an end. He's given us time, Yisra'ya, to impel it, to destroy it, by having a great love for Torah. We've allowed our flesh to present an aversion. He said, I love the commands of you. I'm not backsliding. I love them more than my necessary food. Here we think about a pecan pie, a sweet potato souffle. We don't give a damn about your story. Our minds are not constantly engaged. We don't meditate upon the mitzvah of Yah. Hell, you think of the day what you're going to eat tomorrow. And next week and after that meal. We're not thinking of what we need for, for the strength. To become more than a conqueror. Yes. What it's going to take. Yes. And what we all offering. We all lost on our way to hell. Hallelujah. Because we're not offering a damn thing. Yes. Your divarim. Your word. I esteem it. Much more. 
more than my necessary food. I can eat this bread and live. I can eat this lechem and live. I can eat this and press on. He gives us somewhat of a numeric, a somewhat of a content of more than. Eob 42.12. Yah gives us an understanding. It says, Yah, he barach, he bowed down, the word barach, he bowed down his ear, he bowed down his heart, he bowed his head from Hashem Ma'am. And it said, and Yah barach, the latter, the ach arith, the latter in a Eob. We must come, as you pointed out, my friend, we must come to the Ach Arith, the latter end. And he blessed, he brach the latter end of Eob, more than, more than, more than in the better sheets. He has blessed us in the latter end more than those that were in the better sheets. He blessed him more in the better in the in the latter in, in the Acharith than he did in the Bereshit. We have seen the power of Yeshua. We have seen the witness of mighty men in the Torah as they have spoken of the dynamics of that power, and yet we have taken it for naught. We have taken the counsel of Yah that it has no substance at all, Yisrayah. So he brach the latter in of Eob more than he did the Bereshit. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yokes of oxen and a thousand she asses. Can you imagine that? If you saw all of that, can you put a numeric content to that? Only Yah could. If you got 10,000 cows, I don't care if you number them, you can't keep count on them. You just look and say, it's more than I could imagine. So he gives us a rab, somewhat of a numeric, as he did as the message on the Chat Ve'imet gave us, uh, uh, an understanding or an idea of three days. That we could see how Yah, even uh, in the midst of that three days, the, the, very, the very sign or the insignia of man. And he in the latter part blessed him more than that. More than, it's going to take more than the imuna we have today uh, if we go into the kingdom. It's going to take more than we offering today uh, than in the beginning, Yisraya. It's going to take more than we give you. It's going to take more than we're willing to offer unto Almighty Yahweh. So his latter end. And the latter house is going to be more beautiful than the first house. Shalomo built a house, but the finished work, yeah, is going to finish the house. It's going to be finished by the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. And there in that house, his ruach, his presence shall dwell. It shall never leave that house. Even in this earthen tabernacle, his ruach tends uh, to evade us because we cannot, there cannot uh, dwell in the midst of a bed light and darkness. Uh, you will have a shadow of things. Uh, and we know what lurks in the shadow. It is not darkness uh, that fears us. Uh, it is the shadows uh, that we perceive we see in darkness. Uh, it is not Israel. And so he's going to finish the house. He's going to finish the latter house. He's going to put the coat of painting on. It's not going to be whitewashed with lies and deception. But Yah is going to finish the work, Yisrael. He barach his latter end. More than his bereshit. And he has blessed us greatly in the ach arith. More than in the bereshit. He has given us days without numbers. You can even, none of us can tell us the numbers of days we have lived. You can tell me the numbers of hours you have lived or the numbers of minutes. And if you understood the numbers of seconds, it would be beyond your ability to even calculate them. That's why the small things, he gives us great insight of the significance of small things. And we despise the small things of Yah. See, that word doesn't carry much connotation. More than. We're more than conquerors. 
through him. In the power of him that loved us. Can we truly identify that conquering, that Hazak spirit of Yah in us, Yisrael? Can we truly do that? Are we firm in the commands of Yah? Are we resolute that we take a stand for Yah and no weapons of hell formed against us prosper in our minds? Are we truly of that nature and that strength, Yisrael? Are we truly courageous? Do we have the courage of Torah? Are we growing? Are we being strengthened? That is what a chasak, a conqueror is. When he subdues, he overcomes and makes him even more stronger. It makes him even more firm. It gives the resolution of his heart even more. It becomes even more resolute. And that is what gives us resolution, the mitzvah of Yah. He began to open up the wisdom of Yah's mind, his chukna, his skillfulness, how to be skilled in Torah, how to operate in battles. We're more than conquerors. You're sure his latter end was much more productive than his Bereshit. Did not the Zachin Yarameya Yisraya bring out that they all Call for suk him and went his way. And in the Akharith, he restored those that must be restored. So the latter end was greater than the beginning. And the latter end shall be greater more than he was blessed more than than he were in the beginning. What man had more tribulations and trials and weed, his sins, his corruption. But he speaks with a resounding voice here in the book of Tehillim, the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 7. He says to Yah, he says, Yah, you have nothing. You have put you have placed upon me, you have granted. He says, Yah, you have put shimcha, you have put joy. You have put gladness. And the shimcha is, it is the joy of Yah. That's what it is. The shimcha, shimcha, it is Yah's joy. In the midst of great battles and afflictions, that we said, Yah, you have put gladness in my love. More than, more than, more than in the time that their corn and their wine ra'ad. Do you hear that? I don't think we hear that. He said, although the increase of the abundance of the fruit of the wine, what I see and what I will see, the thousands of skins of wines and the, and the cellar of refreshing But I will see the abundance of the corn that I knew that my people will have sufficient. But I will see the gathering of that uh, during the time of ingathering. He said, you have put more joy, more shimha in my land, more than all of that. He said, your joy is more than all of that. That made me rejoice. But I will see the tens of thousands of skins of wine. Cannot keep record of them. And the corn beyond my expectation. When I think about the toughness of Yah and all. That he has done for me my nephesh cries. Hallel. Praises unto Yah. And to give us some kind of knowledge and understanding of the greatness of more than. He said it was greater than more than all of the skins of wine. More than all of the riches that one can perceive. More than. We're going to have and must have more than the shimcha of Yah than we have. 
Oh, I know what we sing, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And we sing the other part and the world can't take it away. Although we are damnable liars, the smallest little infraction takes away our resolve. The smallest little thing removes us away from our rejoicing. We are, we are full of shekha, lies, and corruption. We have learned to lie well, to sing a lie well. To pretend well. We have not learned how to rejoice in the Torah of Yah. We have not learned that. We have become great pretenders. But we are not sincere, Yisrael. This joy, the joy you have put in me. It is greater, it is more than. When I see the great blessings of your riches... When I see the abundance of corn and the increase of the yah in the wine. He says more than that yah. Hallelujah. He speaks again here. I think it's vitally important in Tehillim 40 verse 5. Eob says here, Mini or Rab or yah. He addresses him as his Abba, his mighty wonder. He says, are your wonderful works which you have done. Are not the works of your wonderful? Yes. Can you numerically put a number to the works of Yah? They're beyond our ability. Because everything is Yah because he is everything. He made tough and evil. He made uh, light and darkness. He set before us life and death. He made death and life. He said, So his works are wonderful. They're beyond our ability to express in, in, in our limited terminology. The only way we can express the mighty and wonderful works of Yah, and they are rap, they are many, they are many, they are beyond the exceedingly uh, numerically, uh, they are beyond the numeric expression. Uh, the only way we can express the works of Yah, can I tell us how we can do it? The only thing that can express the wonderful works of Yah, there's only one thing. It's in this simple phrase. Hallelujah. That's it. Period. And so the world and the whole house is has taken away the purity of that meaning, hasn't it? So everything we see, we just shout hallelujah. I see the leaves of the trees and the, uh, and the beautiful change. I just, uh, yeah, look at that. As we were digging up the sweet potatoes, harvesting them the other day, uh, I looked down at the trees and the beauty of colors uh, that are so rich, e rich and even my eyes. Uh, could they pick? I said, look at that up. Uh, what is more beautiful than that? His works are wonderful. That's why the only thing we can say is hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, your works are wonderful, yeah. And he says, uh, and your thoughts, the devices, the plans, na'ach, Abai, your plans, your purpose for Yisra'iyah, and your thoughts, which are to us words, to Yisra'iyah, his people, there is none to compare to you. None. Nothing. He said, if I would declare and speak them, they are more than, can be numbered. More than. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He said, if I try to put a number, I cannot equate a number to your wondrous work. Shaul did not speak a word that did not have grave significance. That we as leaders and messengers must dig in the Torah of Yah. And scrutinize each word Shaul says. That's why we're going to be judged by every word. We don't scrutinize each word. We go on the Torah. We don't look at each word, Yisra'ya. 
We look at a, a concurrency of words and in a text and we don't get a damn figure of it. You don't get a damn thing. You're wise in your own conceited fashion. Shaul did not throw those words in there for filler. More than. More than. More than. His mind, his conscience was nourished in the speech of the guardians of Torah. Men like Dawid and Shirach. Ezra and Amos, Hoshea, Jehoshaphat, the writings of Torah, the wisdom of the wise men, Methuselah, Yeshua. His mind was trained. And every word was valid. Every word of Yah is pure. It is tachor. It is taha. It is without any corrupt ingredients to corrupt us. It is not me. It is not corrupt. We corrupt it in a corrupt mind. Out of a corrupt heart. We corrupt your word, Yisrael. Because we are trying to... Uh, we tried to inject as the stripes of the Pharisees uh, our own conscious uh, interpretation of it to our private consent uh, to appease us that we corrupt even ourselves. And those that touch the words from our mouths and our minds, we corrupt it. So to understand the significance of more than a conqueror, you cannot equate it with anything but the wondrous works of Yah. Your sure conquered death, hell, and the grave. And he declared unto death, where is your sting to inflict me? For I know that the sting of death is chata, is sin, a willingness to defy the soundness of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And these filthy whole houses, they're telling them you can sin. No, you cannot. You cannot practice sin. What is sin? Well, sin is the transgression of the Torah. You find these damn dirty bastard slips that tell you. And there's a dirty bastard that put that on our YouTube page. And wrote that we don't need Torah today. This dirty, cowardly, effeminate, faggot dog. Because they want to engage into their wickedness. You understand. They want to engage into their vile corrupt ways. And these damn gritting hyenas of devils. That lie from the rostrum of Yah. And grin and clown like jackasses. They want that spirit of silliness and stupidity. Ah we may be ignorant. But let us not be sottish to rest upon the people today. And they want that that they can get by with anything. Anything they say the people will buy it. No, I don't give a damn if you challenge what I say. Challenge it. But just make sure you're as strong as I am when you challenge me. That's all I'm saying. I speak simple truth. It's not difficult to understand this more than a conqueror. I got to lay this down, my Achshimri, because I didn't justify even the message on last Shabbat. All right? And so as I pondered this week how to convey that, well, when I awakened this morning, I said to my Isha, I got to get her. I had some of the silliest dreams last night, and they were all around 6.30 or 6.45 until seven i said i must get up hallelujah when i was down on the creek there on the on our property on the other side and i didn't know how to get out of that so i said uh, in my dream rafael wake me up so she waking me on that one 
couldn't wake up. The other one was that uh, uh, there was one that was here. We had given her an offering and she came and she repudiated me. She began to slap my face and she began to slap his face. And although our kindness, we're trying to show kindness, uh, and I say, this is crazy, rough, fair work. And then she awakened me out of that one. And then the next silly one, I don't even recall that one. It was just as silly as they come. Uh, and I said to her, I must get up. And when I got up out of the bed, refreshed myself, began to look at the Torah, this is where he led me, all right, more than. You must clarify that. You must bring uh, the excellence of that and simplicity to the people of Yah. More than a conqueror. It cannot be numbered, Yisrayah. One of the most wise pronouncers of Yah's truth, the Shirach. Hear the words of Shirach here. Shirach 719. I want to speak from two verses that he writes. Shirach 719 and Shirach 2911. He commands man as Yah for his Hamashiach. He's going to have a beautiful wife, an Isha that is beautiful. She's going to be a high yield woman, a woman of strength. She's going to be the woman of the military power to fight and to resist all forces of hell. He says, man, do not deprive yourself of a wise and a tough wife. For her charm is worth more than gold. Do you hear that? And you see what the powers of hell have reduced women down to? There's nothing more precious than a tough wife. It did not say her sexual proclivity. Yeah? It says her charm, her beauty, her tifera. Yeah. It's more precious than. We are more than. It is more than. It is more precious. Uh, more than uh, gold. Yeah. That's why his wife, she is going to be a virtuous woman. She's going to be a high yield woman. Not a virgin, but a virtuous woman. We have, uh, we have, uh, we have copulated uh, in the spiritual sense with every kind of demon power. We have gone to bed with every kind of wicked vow thing there is. Uh, we have taken pleasure in that. Uh, that's why I use the word copulate. Uh, we have done that. We have enjoyed the thrill of every kind of damn vow thing uh, and every kind of damn corrupting uh, that one can imagine. Uh, our damn sins and our wickedness, yeah. our unclean ways. I will, man. So he said, Don't deprive yourself of a tough wife, for even her charm is worth more than gold. Do you understand that? We don't understand that. Because Yah says that in the Akhurith, that a man, an ish, will be more precious, more precious rap than the fine goes of Ra. Do you hear that? And he says the beauty, the charm, and look at what the powers of hell have done. They have made this thing they call the church a dirty whore it is. It is not the gathering of the assembly of Yisrael. She is a dirty flirtatious whore. That's why the women dress like whores. They dress their daughters like whores. They put them on the garments of desolation of abomination. And I'm going to teach on that again soon. They allow them to wear pants to show the print of their anatomy. It is an abomination before Yah. It is an abomination before Yah. If I came in here with a damn mini skirt on, you will call me a damn faggot. That's what you would do. Your daughter's a damn butch bulldagger. You are butch bulldagger too, mama, for wearing these damn despicable garments. It is not a dress of moderation. It is immoral unto Yah. You look at the way the damn horse dress. You don't dress like them. Can I show an example? You'd be surprised who watches you. My Isha and I were in Walmart yesterday. This elderly Caucasian woman, I don't recall her waiting on us before. And as we are there, I always bag my things. I don't like all of those bags. She says to me, 
she says she is so immaculate and so so beautiful see every time she comes in here she is so immaculate and proper you didn't hear her say that I did oh she was speaking to me she didn't even hear it see this is her first time hearing it she's so immaculate she's so beautiful she said I can imagine her home because she is just so and look how she dresses her colors you understand I don't say much to people when I'm out and I really don't but that one I said to her ma'am thank you kindly you understand she was complimenting me see she didn't even hear that I did I know what she said and then we think that it is not appropriate for what we represent we're wrong and then we think if others do not see us we're wrong it is an abomination for a woman to put on a garment a kelly that pertains to a man so it is an abomination for a man to wear that which pertains unto a woman so if i come in here with a dress on is it all right you got these little effeminate men that have no control on their homes. They will say, well, the men dress in a garment. And the garments of the man and the woman in the days, they looked almost alike. Damn lie from hell. Even the colors were different. Even the design were different. This is how they want to justify it. It is an abomination. It is a, a bad. It is an apostate mindset because if Paris Hilton dressed like a damn dirty whore, if Lindsay Lohan dressed like a 10 cent slut, uh, if Queen, uh, Queen Latifah, whatever the damn bull dagger Jezebel is, uh, if she's butch bull dagging around with women uh, and she dressed like a big fat dirty slutty whore, you think you should dress that way whether you're thin or fat? Uh? I don't care if you don't like me. I don't frankly give a damn. Uh, Thomas said that individuals that he had put on the radio station and they said to him that preacher there in South Carolina just he's just not quite right in essence I like that I am not discouraged Israel believe me those things do not trouble me men turn against me turn away from me it doesn't trouble me I've done no man wrong you understand that none so it doesn't bother me because what they say the accusations i sleep like a little kitten at night the matter of fact mikhaya wrote me and i said mikhaya 7 30. now that's strange i was in the bed at that time 7 30. i was gone i said to my issue i see why i'm dreaming crazy dreams it's time to get up i was tired hallelujah more than shirach don't deprive yourself my ark don't deprive yourself are there czars and battles sure it is in our flesh sure but don't deprive yourself because the charm of a precious wife a tough wife there is nothing more beautiful than a tough wife there's nothing and the enemy has reduced the women down to nothing but a sluttish type of projection. They use them to sell everything from toilet paper to sell them against themselves. Taking you women out of the diasporas and made you ashamed of your damn nappy head. Well, you don't even have hair now because of your damn sins. You burn it out, you perm it out. That's right, give him a hand clap. Yeah. So damn a shame of your nappy hair. He's made the hoary head men uh, so damn juvenile their shame uh, of their gray beard and their hair that they died in all that kind of damn folly. Yeah. I won't die one damn strand. Yeah. I won't damn strand. Yeah. I won't die yet. Yeah. Love every gray hair. Don't despise the one. Yeah. Turn it off all of them. Yeah. Won't die, brown. Won't die, black. Yeah. 
that you women so damn despising of yourself, uh, you're turning your damn hair red and blonde. You believe the damn lie of the blonde hair more fond uh, than while these whores like Paris Hilton uh, and the whores like Lizard Lohan uh, sleeping with women instead of men. Uh, they're miserable as hell. Uh. Hallelujah. I like you, man. I really do. Can't make no money this way. That's why you all don't send no offerings. Isn't that a shame? Ain't nobody go, you're yeah, not. Yeah, I say it that way. Take not, ain't not. You stop dressing your daughters like whores. And buying them those things. You dress them beautifully as young women. You dress yourself, mother. It's a nasty thing. It's filthy. Your body's not made to have anything up in it like that. It's a damn shame. Hallelujah. You dress them right. You dress your daughters right. You dress them to be chandos. They get old enough where they want to do their own thing. I'm going to teach on training them next. We need to understand what Yah means when he says trained. Hallelujah. We don't understand Torah because we don't have time for time for Walmart, Kmart, Dollar Mart. Fat daddy's burger joint, but no time for the table of Yah. Spend eight hours out shopping for, come home with two little damn bags from the dollar store and you think you got something. You're silly as hell. Hallelujah. Spend three hours in Walmart, look over the same trash. Go to Dollar Mart, go down every aisle, you know where everything is. I buy the same products when I go to Walmart. I can take you where the grits are. I can take you where the oatmeal are. I can take you where the chicken is. And I buy one kind of a chicken, the Heartland, the, the free range organic birds. And that, I can take you where everything is. I know what I buy. I can take you and get the laundry detergent. And that's it. I can take you and get the toothpaste. I know where that's at. Hallelujah. Nothing that but trash. Moving on, he says here in Shirak 29 and 11. He commands us to lay up your treasure, your riches. He said, I want you to lay up your treasures according to the commandments or the mitzvah. That's how you lay them up. You lay up in your heart your treasures according to the commandments of the Most High, Almighty Yah. And it will profit you more than gold. Do you hear that? More than. He said we lay up treasures according uh, to the mitzvah, the commands of Yah. Yes. He said it will shalach. It will enrich you. It will cause you to increase. It will profit you more than that. More than. Rob. Than gold. And we began to allow the Torah of Yah to shape our minds. To shape our desire, our passion for Yah. To shape our conscience that we will have the mind of your sure Hamashiach. Then we will be a people that is truly a rich people. Because we do not lay up treasures for where a man's treasure is, there shall also the man's heart be. Because our treasure is not laid up according uh, to the commands of Yah, then there's another thing that we treasure more than Yah. And your sure spoke on it too. I'll get to that. We should lay up the treasures of the riches of Yah according to the commandments. You cannot have ill against your neighbor. You cannot have ill against Yisra'ya and think you're laying up correct treasures. You are a damn liar. You cannot have aught in your level against me. I cannot have aught in my level against you. Uh, and think that I have treasures in my level according to the mitzvah of your, your damn liar. Your flat out damnable hypocrite. So we lay up in our lev treasures of according to the commandments of the mitzvah of the Most High. And it will profit, it will shalak. It will increase you, make you rich more than, more than gold. What's more expensive today than gold? There's only, there are other rare 
type minerals that are much more expensive than gold because platinum is more expensive than gold. Gold is what, around $2,700 an ounce, but platinum is probably double that. It will cost you for an ounce of platinum, it will probably cost you four grand. Sure will. I'll check the commodity price on platinum and see what it is. And I'll tell you what it is, all right? But platinum is more expensive than gold. Platinum is much more expensive than gold. It has the same enduring factors as gold has. What he tells us, Yisra, we lay up treasures in our land. For a man, for, for where a man's treasures are, there is where his heart is. Wherever, whatever you have treasured in your heart, that's where your heart. If you have treasured folly and sinful practices, that's where your heart. That's why our hearts are not on the things of Yah. That's why our minds do not gravitate to the Torah of Yah. So where man's heart, where man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. So. In our hearts, we lay them up according to the wisdom of Yah, his mitzvah. We know the mitzvah of Yah there. In that we find the codes of wisdom. Uh, and it's going to take the Torah to break the codes. You understand? Uh? You got to understand how to break the codes of wisdom. It is vitally important for us to understand that. I will show us how we get there. If I do nothing yesterday, I'm going to conclude that. Uh, and then I will go back to the better sheet of God. I may not finish it up next Shabbat, but I will finish it up sometime. I know that my days are not as long as they have been. My energy is not as it was when I was younger. And so I must have uh, the resolve and the resilience of you. I must train the young men, train their minds, uh, and discipline them in the ways of you. Yeah. Not to be damn hypocrites and labor. I don't give a damn how tired you are when you come home. Show that you've labored in the Torah of you. I don't give a damn. There was a man that worked hard every day. I would keep around my house immaculate. That I would go to the gym every day, every day. Had to play me some ball. Had to do something. Couldn't sit around. I could not. I will, man. And so that's the way we must do it. Hallelujah. When our flesh is tired like that, he read the scripture that we must, I don't use that word, but we must impel our flesh, impel. We must, in essence, he said, crucify, kill it, destroy it, impel. We must impel, impel, destroy it. And so when we have no energy to do what we need to do, that's when we do it. You can be dead, tired, born out. If you had cells to clip, clip on, you would have how many numbers loaded in there? All of a sudden you see, oh, what? Hey, girl. Hey, man, how you doing? You know what happened today? Just, and you will have energy to listen, to talk. You have strength. I will, man. You have strength for that. You have energy for that, for folly. But when it comes to, yeah, you have no energy for that. I was reading Oximion, uh, Shimri the other day, uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, a son and his father. They went their separate ways that morning. I don't know if they embraced each other. But the father went one way. A massive wreck he was in killed him instantly. His son didn't even know. Within an hour, his son had a wreck and killed him. I saw the picture of the two cars, both the same kind of damage to the vehicles just torn to pieces they both both of them the daddy and the son that is somewhat unusual isn't it you don't find anything like that Yisraya. they were destroyed the cars were destroyed we must destroy our flesh that it doesn't rise up our minds don't rise up, up against almighty yah and the only way we're going to lay up our treasure is by the mitzvah of yah we have laid up treasures by our own wickedness our lies and our practices that are against yah everything i read from 
Ezra on last week, uh, on last Shabbat. It was dealing with the sins and what they had laid up in their hearts. Uh, that's why they practiced sin. Uh, they walked in sin and they defied the commandments of Yah. And this messenger, the messenger of Yah, Sharak says uh, that we are to lay up treasures uh, according to the mitzvah, the commandments of the Most High, and it will profit us more than. More than. We are more than conquerors. Through Him, through Him that loved us, we are rob, we are conquerors, we are chazak, we are sound. Are we sound in our position with Yah? Or do we shake, rattle, and roll? Do we stand firm? Do we stand in the resound nature of Yahshua HaMashiach? Or do we get weak need? And we capitulate? And we move, we backslide. Oh, the Lara is consistent with his people. The people are backsliding in wickedness, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, this man, this Zachim brought this out to us. I want to read it again. Yeshaya, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 14. The tremendous agony of the body of Yeshua was beaten and smitten. Yeshaya, Isaiah 52, verse 14. It says, as many that were shomeim, or they were astonished, they were poor, they were mystified, they were be, it was beyond their ability to grasp, they just stood there. And many were astounded at him. It says his marith, his visit, his marith was, uh, it was mishcha, it was marred, beyond the ability to recognize a human form or any kind of beauty and the bard has been so marred it said it was marred Zakim brought this out on Wednesday on Chavayimat. hallelujah I was hoping he stopped right there and just elaborate on that even more it says this more than more than we're more than conquerors see the power of that body being more than marred more than any man and his form his to uh, his form his form listen more than more than the son of man are we more than conquerors see it is that body that gave us the power to conquer his body was marred more than we got to take this body and kill it more than we did yesterday we got to destroy the efforts the things that energize it the passion of it. His body was marred. His visage was marred more than. And yea, through all of these things, nay, through all of these things, we are more than. We are more than. And when Shaul began to ponder the very visage of Yahshua, his body, more than. He has hidden these uh, simple phrases in the book uh, from the wise and the prudent. Uh, he's revealed them to the dumb jackasses. Uh, that will be willing to carry the burden and the weight of them uh, and to bring the significance of their value unto a people that he has elected. More than. More than. Was there, was there any man whose countenance was marred more than your shoes? No man. He's trying to show us the superiority of us being more than conquerors. Uh, Throw money, y'all, uh, because he loves us. Uh. I wanted to teach on the Warriors of Daiwi, one day I will. I got a message on that. Now give me the warriors of Daiwi. You take Gideon warriors. Give me David warriors. Daiwi's warriors. And by the way, one was named Mechalia. A warrior. As a matter of fact, I post all the names of all of his warriors. How about that? How do you know that? Well, it takes a laboring, intense effort. You can't sit down and eat your bean pie and your coconut cream cupcake and your tapioca. You that's looking for a wonderful name, I'll give you some names, all right? Hallelujah. Take on the name of the Isha. Hallelujah. You and your wife. Your Isha. Your Isha can. Hallelujah. Can I move on, Israel? You might as well love me. You might as well. 
you all are going to be relaxing and uh, I, I need to make sure that I have something to feed to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love fried chicken. I love fried spicy chicken wings. I'm going to lie to you and say I don't. I love pound cake. I love fried fish. I don't want it baked. I don't want it steamed. I want it fried. I want it seasoned. And I want it seasoned right. Give me some fried fish. Fried chicken. I don't want it baked. I don't want no gravy chicken. I want fried. Fried drumsticks. Fried chicken wings. That's right. Fried short thighs. I want it fried. I don't give a damn about what is healthy. I want it fried. Hallelujah. I love it so much. Sweet potato pie. Even a milkshake every now and then. Banana boat. Banana split. Hog and dog ice cream. Mississippi mud ice cream. I love it. Cake any kind. Pies, give me some pie. But I know it doesn't love me. And so I love it so much that I honor it. It's a nice thing to have fried chicken every now and then. Have a nice slice of pie. I don't want it every day. Fried. From Vaughn's Chicken Fish House. Fried fish with that nice spicy crust on that. Talk to me. Come on, you hypocrites. That's eating there. Now that ain't, no, not that it's not, that ain't eating if it's baked. Give it to me fried. Hallelujah. And so there are times that uh, it may be nice to lay down and slumber and sleep. You got to get up, man. You got to get up, woman. You got to bathe your mind in this. You understand? Hallelujah. No rest to the wicked. We are backsliding people. We are a uh, mishuba, mishuba. We are people that are past state. Our minds are turned away from Yah. It is given over unto the Lord Spirit. What lords us? What rules us? Tell me what rules us. We're more than conquerors. And yet we've been ruled by the damn most corrupt God there is. The God of our own bellies. The God of our bellies. The God of our own bellies. That's what rule us. We justify ourselves more than. Well, I know he said I should wear pants, but you justify your damn wicked ways more than anything. Uh, listen, a, 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 an abomination doesn't change. Uh, if it's an abomination for a man to sleep with a man like womankind, uh, it is an abomination. Uh, if it says an abomination and the and the cut vein is expressive of what y'all calls abomination, uh, for a man to sleep with a dog like a woman, uh, for a woman to sleep with a man like a dog, uh, for a man to sleep with another man, the faggot damn dogs, for the butch bulldagger women to sleep with women, for a woman to wear the garments of a man, a man to wear the garments of a man, it is an abomination unto you. I don't give a damn how you see it. It's the spirit of apostate. You can't shake that damn thing. Well, I don't see what's wrong. I know because you justify yourself more than you justify your, your damn wicked Jezebel. Your damn wicked fool, man. Well, men wear hats. Sure they do. Women should wear coverings. Come on, talk to me. Come on, you jackasses. Come on. Because they tell the woman to be covered. It's an abomination, abomination. The word to eba, it never changes. So is sleeping with a man, with another man, is that to eba? Sure it is. For a woman to say she's in love with another woman is, and she's kissing another woman, is that an abomination? Sure it is. So it is for a woman to wear the garments that pertain to a man. And a man to wear, would I look like a freak out of hell if I come in here with a mini dress on? Then you look like a freak out of hell with, with, with pants on. It's filthy. It's vile. It's unclean. It's unclean. 
And men look at you as an unclean thing too. And that's a fact. They don't respect you. You think you're holding something. You're holding nothing under there but mess. You're ashamed of what you're holding under there. Talk to me. I'm not going to stop preaching this way. I don't give a damn what man says. I'm talking to the house of Yisrael. There must be a difference between my people and thy people. The bath of Tizayim must dress different. You carry yourself different. I was saying to, I think it was Yosibia uh, Akshemri, I said, you know, I remember when my Isha came home and told me the first time that she wasn't wearing no more pants. And I said to her, I said, I use the same justification as we all do. I said, women wear hat, men wear hat. I said, what about drawers? Women wear drawers. And she said, yeah, all that is right. I said, men wear shoes and women wear shoes. She said, yeah. I never forget what she said to me. She said, yeah, that's, that's right. You're right on that. And no doubt about it. She said, yeah, I got, I wear cap like you at times and wear cap. I said, women, women wear t-shirts and men wear t-shirts. She said, yeah. She said, that you're right. I ain't going to argue with that. You're right on that. She said, but I'm not going to wear the pants. That's just it. And that was it. I didn't fight against her. I left it at that. And I've never from that day, 30-something years ago, never seen, I've seen her do the same thing I do, work in the fields and help me. I've never seen her from that day. From that day. Hallelujah. This is what the world says, beautiful. It is sensual. It makes you voluptuous. It makes you look like a fool, women. Come out of them damn abominable garments. In these little effeminate men talking about modest dress and the women dressing like whores. The titties flopping out. I don't even like to see men with their shirt. Let you look, Ark, if you all going to unbutton these things like this, put on a T-shirt. Wear, wear a T-shirt under there, all right? Yeah, I don't like to see men with their shirt open like that. It's wrong. Put a T-shirt on. No, 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 no one needs to see your hair in your chest. Come on, cover, cover your neck up. They, there's only one person here I've had, I haven't had to get on about that that's been with me all the years, and that this man right here. He really always keep, he, man, he, in the, in the in 100 degrees, his button up to his nose. Huh? You never seen him with a short sleeve shirt on, have you? Never. You've never seen that man with a short sleeve shirt on. Never. 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 We cover ourselves. Hallelujah. I don't care if you get upset with me. An old man like me trying to lay it open here for what? Gray hairs. That's stupid. I want to dress like a man. I want to look like one. I want to act like a mature man. I want to stand like one. Hallelujah. No different than a woman laying out her titties and every man seeing them. No different than a man. You think a woman doesn't see that? Come on, Yisraya. Yeremiah, he says that, 311. For Yah says to me, the backsliding, the meshuba, the apostate Yisraya, we have justified ourselves more than the treacherous Yahuda. But he also, because of his comfort, he gives us some, some kind of resolution. And the next verse he says, he says to the Nobi, go and proclaim these Dibarim, the words, toward the north. Because we're scattered in the north and the south, the east and the west. He says, Shub, return. Make Teshubam, you backsliding Yisraya, says Yah. He said, and I will cause my anger to fall. I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. Uh, he said, for I am merciful, says Yah. He said, I will not keep anger, Olam Viet. He said, I won't stay angry with you forever. He said, just turn around. Just stop doing what you're doing. Stop doing it. You did it yesterday. Don't do it today. Come on, don't try to justify yourself more. Don't try to justify yourself against me. I'm going to bring out the significant as the Yisra'ya and Yahura teach that soon, all right? You all can teach it. I don't care. You that have a message on that, teach it. I'll put it up. Come on. We can't justify ourselves more than. We justify ourselves more than Yah. I don't see nothing wrong with I know our corrupt mind because it is carnal. It is enmity against the Torah of Yah. If a woman puts on a garment that pertains unto a man or man versa, it is an abomination. It ba unto Yah. It doesn't change. This mindset in this wicked nation today says that uh, we're going to blur the gender. So men are wearing the tight stretch pants. Uh, they're wearing the tidy jeans like women. and ha You know, I looked at a little young freak yesterday. I looked at the boy. I just looked at him. 
And of course, I don't mind when people look at me because I look at them in a way they look at me. They you know, just look at me. They tend to say, well, okay. That's how you doing, man. I do that. How you doing, man? I respond that way. That's why I always do. How you doing, man? And this boy looked like a little effeminate thing. I don't want to look effeminate. No effeminate man is going into the kingdom. An effeminate man has not the strength of the testimony of Yahshua. Oh, he may be big and bronx. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that he is not an effeminate man. He has not the beauty of Yah's character. Yahshua is not in his rush. He's an effeminate man. I don't give a damn if he's six foot five, 218, 35 pounds. 22 inch arm. That doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. He's still an effeminate man. You go to the prison house, some of the baddest cats in there. Six foot five, 275 pounds, benching 485 pounds, and they're walking around with red bonnets on. It is the truth, man. They're more effeminate and faggotite in that manner than the little old fellow that's uh, five, eight and a half, 165 pounds. Everyone know that he's tough as a nail and he will hurt you. And they know even the six foot five faggot knows uh, that if I mess with old, old Jim Slim, boy, I know that I got the heart and I got to watch my every move. Uh, unless I kill him, he's going to kill me. You understand? So it's not the nature of one's size. It's the nature of what's ruling in their conscience, in their mind. And so because they're big and bronzy, that doesn't mean that, that, that he's not an effeminate man. A man that is effeminate has no strength of total guidance. He doesn't rely upon that. His children rule, his wife rule, his house is in shabble because he has no strength at all. He doesn't want to walk in the definities of the Torah of Yah. He's a weak jackass. He's weak. It's one thing that I, I'm not amazed at. They must dishelve what they have learned from here. Because it cuts at the core of their damn wicked hearts. So they find different ways and different ways to say it because it cuts. And they like those little uh, messages that are so melancholy and that a damn dog can sit in the midst and he won't even bark. Never forget many years ago I was up there in Maine. Uh, in, um, in, 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 in Holt, Michigan, at this conference they had. And of course, after I finished preaching, the whole house was angry as hell. I'm telling you, they were mad at me. One stood up, you ain't going to curse, I said, you vile thing of hell, shut your mouth. I rebuke you, Hashem. Oh, there was one by the name of Matthews. He said, Matthew, you... Oh, Matthew's taught such little beautiful little thing. It didn't even, I mean, people had their, had their foot, their feet, their foot propped up on chairs uh, and just doing everything in that place. I said, you can never come to victory and do that. Reach, why don't we have it? I said, no, sir, you couldn't come to victory. It's too hot there. Not only is it hot, oh, in Texas it's hot. No, I'm not just talking about the S-U-N. Because I get in there and I'm not going to let you get up there and masquerade in this falseness. I'm not going to let you do that. And so this one rose up against me and these, and these elect elders now, they standing back there and I said, all of you shut your mouth. They had never seen me. But yet they were afraid. Yes, they were. Some of the same ones that told my Akhtamas, uh, that preacher from South Carolina, don't mess with him now. Don't mess with him. And there were three old Germans, two women, and a man. And they walked up a little man in stature. The old woman, the body owned her. She was weeping from her eyes. She was crying and she grabbed my hand and she began to, to do it like this. Oh, my ah, They used to nobody talk like this now. And she would just do it by hand like this. Oh. oh, and the old man, he just looked at me and he would just cry. Just, oh, man, this. Oh. It's what I take this. We must have this daughter. If we're going to go to the kingdom, this is the only way. So they, they don't want to hear this. So they find places that, uh, that satisfy them and uh, seduce their own wickedness. You understand? They don't want truth. Uh, that's why there are so many that will turn against me. That's all right. I'm not, I'm not troubled because of that. 
He said that they all forsook Yahshua. Can I tell you this? All will not forsake me. There will be a few that stand with me. You understand? All will not. Two more verses on more of that. And I want to touch on something quickly and show us the ingredients of how we become more than. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. You're just anticipating that, aren't you? Waiting. All right. Hallelujah. I want to read from the Nobi Hoshia. What I'm teaching today is trying to express unto us the urgency and the need of true teshuva, repentance. And show us how that we as Yisraya, as our forefathers, that we cannot breach the Brits, the allegiance, the covenant, the alliance of Yah as he has betrothed us as a woman. He was a, he was a tough woman. He's not going to deprive himself of a tough wife because she's more precious than the gold. More than gold. He's not going to deprive himself of that, Yisrael. He's not going to deprive himself of whom is going to fill his heart. He has created wonderful things, but there's still something in his heart that he needs that he made us dirt creatures. And this is going to be the capstone of all of his beauty, man. That's why the world is after any man. It's trying to break us all down as men to make us effeminate and soft with the fag eyed spirit. Trying to remove our authority as a man to say it's inappropriate, Bath. This is not right. Trying to take all the authority of the head of Yeshua HaMashiach. That it blurs everything. That you don't stand against uh, those things that encroach upon the beauty of Yah's testimony, Yeshua HaMashiach. That you stand. And having done all to stand, as Shaul says, uh, you stand. And see the Yoshach, the salvation of Almighty Yah. The Nobi Hoshia speaks unto us so indicative of our actions and our deeds uh, and other purity of Yah's concern from us. Uh, Yah says here in Hoshia chapter 6 verse 6. Yah says for I desired my pleasure, I desired mercy to show my haset or my nocham. Hoshia 6.6. 6. He said and not in zebak and uh, not in sacrifices. Uh, he says, and the knowledge of Yah more than burnt offerings. He wants us to have the knowledge of Yah, his da'at, to discern, to understand more than. And look at the offering that Shalom offered unto Yah, thousands of animals slaughtered. And Yah says, I want more than that. My da'at in you, I gave you that. I put that in you. If you saw that because you have embraced the world, uh, you have embraced the concepts of religious practices, uh, and you have built up the uh, strange whole houses. That's why you got the Baptist whole house, the Methodist whole house, the Pentecostal whole house, the Holiness whole house, uh, the Church of God whole house, uh, the Church of God in Christ whole house, uh, the Church of the Loud Jesus Christ whole house, uh, the Church of God, the Prayer of All People whole house. Uh, that's all you got. The whole houses. The whole houses. There's only one house. To the Yah, there's only one house. That's Behatz. Behatz. Yisraya. Na Beit Yahuda, na Beit Yisraya is one. For Yah is his heart. And so is his house. There's only one house. You got many houses. The Lutheran whole houses. The Episcopalian whole houses. The Church of the Episcopalian, the Seventh-day Adventist whole house, uh, by the whore, uh, 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 Miss White, that whore, Marilyn G. White. You got the Jehovah Witness whole house. You got the black whole house. You got the whole white whole house. You got the Chinese whole house. You got the Korean whole house. You got the Vietnamese whole house. You got the Muslim whole house. You got the you got the, the Jewish whole houses. Orthodox whores. Uh, uh, you you got you you got the the conservative whole houses. I'm not taking that back. It's amazing that you talk when you use the word Jew that everyone uh, you 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 semite hate and all. Those are not your Semitic people. If we're gonna go by the literature of Torah, they cannot be. Well, it's not about color. You're a damn lots about color. 
Everything you do is about color. Your damn white Jesus, your damn white talker. You think that folks are going to accept that people of your color, your skin complexion, uh, identify with the true heritage of, of the people of God? They don't want to hear that. Uh, don't give me that damn lie. It's all about color. It's all about the color skin uh, in this religious damn house. Uh, they will mock you. Uh, you talk about those Ashkenazis, those damn liars over there. You talk, oh, oh, oh no, you can't say that. They're the sons of Ibrahim. I would, I got it. I just, we can't even accept and receive the simple things I preach. How are we going to understand the things that are a little more heavy? I'm a heavyweight. We had a friend that found out that we had heavyweights among us, didn't we? Yeah. Heavyweight A, heavyweight B, heavyweight C, heavyweight E, all heavyweights. No lightweights here. Heavyweight F, heavyweight G, heavyweight H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, heavyweights. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Yeah, we heavyweights. No lightweights here. All heavyweights. So don't tell me it makes no different. That's a damn lie. It makes a whole lot different. You understand? So we see the people that are of the Zira of Ibri. That people don't buy that. I'm going to teach that one day. All right. Just bear with me. You are can teach it. I'm not jealous of that you can provoke me to jealousy that make me drive to study even the more that's what you do for me hallelujah you're not the outdo you just to make me study more i'm not looking to outdo you how can we outdo ya? you can't outdo that's stupid just make sure your heart is dedicated and sincere and there's a true honest of effort and delight in what you do that's what you do that's what you do. I don't care how it may sound and the brokenness of one's language. I don't give a damn about that. It comes from the substance of the riches of one's bosom. And just make sure you're sincere in that. You may falter as I do, you will too. But just make sure it's of substance. I want to read this last verse here in the, concerning more that. Are we the disciplined ones of Yah? They're not Zakin, Yah, Rabbi Yah, Yisra, bring that out to us, the disciplined ones. His disciples, we're the disciplined ones, right? Oh, I, 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 that's, that, that, that's, we are the disciplined ones. Boy, that's, that's a strong statement. Because you know they all forsook him, right? He brought that out to us, didn't he? Did he not make mention and bring clarity to that? They all turn and walk no more with him. At least so Kephar says, though all men forsake him. Nay, will I not. And you sure said before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Three days ago, as he brought out to us. Thrice, three times, you're going to deny me. And then when, after he denied him, then the cock crowed. Then he went away sorrowful, didn't he? But he didn't make teshuva. He did not repent. He did not go and meet him. He went on about his own damn business. Like we are doing today. Hallelujah. So we're disciples, right? Let me read what Yahshua says. Here in Matitiya. Chapter 10, verse 37. And I want to show us how we get to this place of development. And then in Yah's time, I will go back and, sh and, and add the other pieces to it. All right? Will you all buy that today? And selling out the truth? Okay. It says here in the book of Metithia, Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. Do we believe this to be truth? Yah says, he that loves Avats or his ima, more than. Again, the word more than, isn't it? More than, Rab. More than, me. He is not even worthy of me. Do you understand that? Matitiya 1037, he that loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves sons or daughter more than me is not even worthy of me. And we are a people that we love them more than we love young. 
We tolerate their wickedness, their sins, their camaraderie, their fellowship more than. We don't want the fellowship. Truly, my fellowship is with the Abba and the son, Yoshua Hamashiach. We don't want that fellowship. We want mama's fellowship and daddy's fellowship more than we want Yah's fellowship. We love them more than. We will tolerate their wickedness. We will allow them an outlet. We love mama. We are so concerned about mama, but we're not concerned about the treasures of our own hearts, uh, how wicked they are that promotes us to do things that are wicked. He said, you're not worthy of me. You have no riches or inheritance in me at all. Because if you cared, if you even give a damn about yourself, uh, you would treasure up the mitzvah of Yah's truth in your bosom. And everything uh, out of your mouth, uh, for the abundance uh, or the abundance of the mouth, or the mouth speaks of the abundance of the heart. Uh, and what is abundant in your heart to speak? Uh, if you talk to mom in a damn wicked ways, and you talk about wickedness and folly, because that's all in you. But if you talk to mama, you're talking about the riches of the treasures of Yah. You're talking about the riches more that so you talk about damn folly see you can get insight on the wicked uh, and what the wicked are doing you are as wicked as mammy you are as wicked as sons and daughters because you love them more than you love yah you don't give a damn about yah so he said you're not worthy worthy is the lamb hallelujah I want her to sing that song to helium 23 you can sing that all right you sing that. Hallelujah. You could sing it more beautiful. So we love Yah less than we love them. He said, you're not worthy. You love mama or daddy. You love sons or daughters more than you love me. He commands us to love him with all. Core, a heart, soul, mind, and strength. When you're weak, you still love him. When all of them battle against you and all of your ignorance, you still love him. And I've seen the onslaught from my natural kinsmen when, when they said I was crazy and they still believe that the day when they rejected me, when they mocked me, it still did not make me any different. I remember one day telling them I gave uh, an offering, I gave all the money I had, a thousand some dollars, uh, and I literally watched them look at each other and say, what a damn fool. I did it to see their reactions. I did it for that result. I did, Yisra'ya. I watched my Ema look at my aunt like, what this damn fool gave that? He could have gave $50. No, it's not the money. It wasn't the issue of money. That's not the issue. Because Yah is more than able to supply a table for me uh, in the midst of all of my enemies. Uh, when they were hungry and lacking, I was not lacking, you understand? Uh, but what about your electricity? Oh, it was turned off, but that's all right. Uh, I was not liking. I still had the joy. I had the strength. I had the fellowship of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. Even though I was ignorant, he said, guide him along. Take him, uh, 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 take him there, bathe him there. He's a dirty little thing. I got to clean him up before I can open up his mind and pour out this into his bosom. And it's going to be pure truth who I pour out into him. That even his enemy shall rise up against me. Moshe said, what you're doing, you're not doing that against me. You're doing it against the one that sent me. You're doing that against Yah. I'm not your enemy. It's Yah. You, you're the enemies of Yah. Two more things that I'm going to close, all right? I am going to close, not because uh, I want to read something that is so beautiful. For the assurance of Yisrael, Yah, his people, it is Yah we must understand. And that's a profound teaching for anyone to dig See, a man can teach on this, what I'm about to say, for the next 10 years, or he can bring such clarity. It is Yah that justifies. He is the one that justifies us, that makes us sadiq. He is. And so, here is one that speaks, Ezra, I want you to hear this, and he speaks. And people will say, well, what about those that did not know or understand? I want you to hear this right here from the book of Ezra. It says... Uh, Concerning about those that did not get the wisdom or the knowledge of the name of Almighty Yah. This is what he says. You have wisdom of that knowledge. And you're going to be counted greater other consequences for the Akhrith than the Be'erishit. 
And those that were before us, uh, they were not, they did not have, they were, they were not those that were raised up in the sense whereby even the technology, even though it is a scurrilous, wicked things uh, to captivate us and to bring us on the Shabbat, uh, yet we still can use it for those that are able to listen and to hear Yisra'ya, and to reach out to them. But, uh, but, but this Kohan, uh, with the Ruach of a Nobi, a powerful man, Ezra, he strives, he writes, from the plethora of wisdom from his bosom, of experience with you, he says this in the book of Ezra. And those that be dead, those that are dead, the Muth, my faith, have died. Yah says, will I raise up again from their place? He says, I'm going to bring them out of the graves. Listen, because I have recognized my name in them. That's what he said. And some of our forefathers, they knew it was more than what that should be. They were brought in the captivity. They knew it was more than that. He said, I'm going to bring them up because I have recognized Yah. Is he the one that justifies? He has placed his name in Yisrael Yah. He said, because I recognize my name in them. And we he can't even read and write. I know, but I said, I put my name in him. He got a third grade education. I know, but uh, because I put my name in him, he knows truth when he hears it. He take not go fight. Yah says that I'll read that again. In the book of Ezra. And those that are dead will I raise up again from their place. And I will bring them out of the grave, those that have died and did not understand the power of his name. We used to sing the song, there is power. Power won the working power in the name or in the blood. See, there's power in the name of the Most High. He said, because I have recognized my name in them. He gave us a vivid revelation of that with the Yakahan on Patmos. And I saw written up top in their forehead. It must be in us. Now, this is not something that's going to happen in the Akhrith. It happened in the Akhruth, the last day, when Yoshua Hamashur gave up the Ruach of Yah. This Kohan, this Nobi right? he says, uh, listen, he says, Yare, fear not, you ima, for who? Of the children. Don't fear, don't be troubled. You understand? You say, fear not, for I have chosen you. He has chosen Yisrael. And I don't give a damn what the enemy does to try to distort that. He said, I have, don't fear. I've chosen you. He said, I will send you help. I'm going to send you that succor, help, that arza, the help, that special help. He says, I will send you help. He said, my servant uh, Yeshia, or Yah has saved, uh, and uh, Yeremiah, whom Yah has appointed, uh, listen to what he says, according to their Musa, their counsel, according to their speech, you must hear this, according to their revelation, according to their counsel, I have set them apart, I have consecrated, uh, and prepared for you 12 trees, the 12 tribes. The twelve elect tribes of Yah. Twelve trees laden with diverse fruit. The fruit of the Ruach. He has prepared that to be in the house of Yisrael. He said, and not only that, but twelve fountains flowing with milk. We as bathed, we desire the sincere purpose or the sincere nutrition of the milk. He said not only is it filled with milk or the fountains, but also dabas with honey. He said, and I've prepared for you seven, the seven ruachim, the seven mighty hair of the mountains, the seven mighty spirits that no man can stand against. 
The seven ruachim, the seven lights of his, of his bosom that no man can, 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 can stand against. That's what the menorah, the seven ruachim of your, that no man, he shall prepare for you the seven mountains. I'll put that in the, ba- in the bosom of the bath of Tizayon, the ruachim, the power of that, uh, into my elect, Yisraeli. Whereupon, whereupon grows the roses and the lilies, the sweet fragrance. Solomon, in all of his beauty, he did not array as one of these little lilies. But Yah says, upon that mountain, that hair, shall the sweetness of the fragrance of your sure flow. He says, by these now, by all of this I prepared, I will fill your children with joy. He said, this is my Torah instruction of my justice. I justify. I am the one that justify. Not man, not you, but I justify. But he doesn't look like a messenger of you. That's all right. I justified him. He doesn't talk the way I talk. That's all right. But I justified him. He says, I'm going to do that for Yisrael, his people. And the only way we're going to understand that there's only one way. The only way that we're going to be more than conquerors. I'm going to close here for today. I don't know if I'll get back. There's so much I need to cover. But I said I would make sure that I would give you this portion. I gave you nothing else today. And this is what the Kohan wrote for us for the latter days. He says here. In the book of Ezra. He asked the question, is he not great that makes these things as that we talked about the wondrous works of Yah? Is he Gadol? Is he great? The Gadol, is he of great substance? Is he of great wealth that when one can speak to the elements and the elements here and form, I don't understand that. So the question, is he not great? Greater is he. For we are more than conquerors through him. The key thing that he loves us. That loves us. So is he great that made all things. Therefore, if he is great, is he mighty? Is there anyone greater than him? Is there one of any comparison to him? Does he share his honor with anyone? You sure that he is great? You that are listening by live stream, someone email me and say he is great. That's all I need, all right? If he is great, if he is mighty, if he is wondrous, if his works are wondrous, if his works, his word work mighty things, then this is what the Kohan notes to us. Again, I read that. Is he not great that makes all things or these things that we see and visually perceive? He says, therefore, if he is great, therefore, great is the truth, the Torah. Do you hear that? If he is great, his Torah is him. Therefore, great is his imat. His truth. If he's great, his truth is great. Therefore, great is his truth. I don't give a damn what book that's written in. That's truth. If he is great, therefore, his truth is great. Therefore, great is his truth. And stronger than all things. I can do all things through your sure Habashiach, through truth, through Torah, that gives me strength. If he are, it's great. If he can move mountains, his truth is great. And there's nothing that is stronger. There's no thing that is strong as his truth. Nothing. Stronger than his mitzvah. That's why the enemy keeps trying to move us away from it. That's why these liars tell us that the Torah is significant, but they're liars. They're children of hell. They're children of perdition. They're children of darkness. He is great. His truth is great. And there's not one stronger than him. We cannot win. We cannot win. He goes on to inspire us. All, not some, all the Ulam cries upon the truth. It was made upon the truth. 
And the Hashemaam, the Idbarach, it bless. It blesses the truth. All words shake and tremble at truth. He's talking about truth now. It shakes and it trembles the works of our flesh, the works of our conscience, the works of our own will. It shakes and trembles at truth. And with it is no unrighteous, no evil, no unrighteous thing in truth. We can't have it part of the way. We must continue in the Torah of Yah. And then we shall yada know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. We must continue in the Torah of Yah. You understand? He said there is no unrighteousness in him. Why is wicked? King, the kings are wicked. Women are wicked. All the children of men are wicked. Such are all their wicked works. And there is no truth in them. But Yah is truth. He said their unrighteousness in their unrighteousness also they shall perish. And he gives us this. As for the imat, ha imat, or the truth imat, ha. He says, it endures. Shaul says we're more than conqueror. It endures. And the greatest of battles, conflicts of our minds, our ru'ah. He says, it endures. And it is always strong. Truth is always strong. It lives, the truth lives, and it conquers forevermore. We're more. When we get this truth in us, we're more than conquerors. Because this truth is great. And there's only one thing that can be compared to the truth. It is Yah. It is his strength. It is his character. And we're conquerors forevermore. We're more than conquerors. We're more. That's why David doesn't want us to get truth. So what do you think of man? A simple man like me. They don't want, come on, Yisraya. I find men fall away from me for the simplest of pettiness and immature reasons. Has my wife upset me over nearly 35 years of marriage? Sure she has. But that doesn't make me want to leave her. Have I upset her? Sure. But that doesn't make my wife wanting to leave me. Get so despondent, so despair with it that I say, I'm throwing my hand. No, yeah, I throw my hands. I surrender all. Yeah, help me. But it doesn't make me want to walk out on her. If there was ever a time she needs me, she needs me more now than she's ever needed me. Because she's crippled. And that's a fact. I see her agony more than you do. You just see the results when she's out here. I see it. So she needs me. And we are crippled people. We need him. What well, we need? Truth, man. Truth. His truth is great. Nothing like his truth. It's mighty. You can't go around the Torah of Yah. And these damn children of hell teaching that they're going to die in their damn wickedness. In hell, you're going to lift your eyes, man. Yeshua did not come to destroy the Torah. He came to show us the power of its uh, ultimate end to fulfill it in flesh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The truth always lives and it conquers evermore. With her, with truth, there is no accepting a person for reward. Truth doesn't accept you and say, uh, I'll let you get by with that. No. The rewards doesn't change truth. Uh, but she does the things that are just. That's what the Torah does. And refrain from all unjust and wicked things. And all men do well. Lack of her works. We will do well if we lack the works of the Torah. We will do exceptionally well. We will do exceedingly well when we love the greatness of Torah. Yeah. Yeah. He gives us a summation here. Neither in her Mishpat, her judgment, is any unrighteousness. And she is the strength of the kingdom. She is the strength. She is the Melkut. She is the power and majesty of all ages. 
Brach. Piya of truth. He's the Abba of truth. So we bless Yah. Bless me, O Maria of truth. And only, and with that, Ezra, it says, he held his shalom, and all the people then shouted and said, great is truth, and mighty above all things. We can do all things through Yahshua that strengthen us. We must be developed in truth in order to be more than a conqueror. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. More than. Rob, exceedingly skillful, excellent. Through him that loves us. And the only way we're going to know Imats, the Yada, to experience, to understand, the imat, the truth of Yah. We must search the Torah. We must shenach. We must hear the Torah of Yah to develop us that we will cry even as the excellence of the speech of the orator says. And they all said, great is truth. And it is mighty above all things. Is Yah above all things? Is he truth? We must be developed that we must become more than conquerors. I do pray in the strength of Yah and Yahshua that even the simplicity of this simple truth will inspire you to press on, as the old folks would say, into deeper depths and higher heights. We need to come up from where we are. We need to get up. We need to move be above this flesh that, that corrupts us and destroys the beauty of Yah and Yahshua in our bosom. Great is truth. I read that from the book of Ezra, even out of the lost book. That was from third Ezra. So the whole writings of Ezra, they're beautiful. This Quran, this Zachin, this elder with the voice of the Nobi. And this last analogy is that the, that the king asked for examples that were more precious than anything. And there were women and all kinds of things. And yet there was one that began to utter what is greater than all things, as the Kohan write, that great is Torah. We can do all things. We are more than conquerors through truth because there's nothing stronger than truth. People, in the sense of natural truth, go to their deathbeds knowing that you may kill me, but I did not commit that uh, draconious, heinous crime that you have locked me up for. I'm innocent. You understand? So there's nothing stronger than truth because Yah is truth and above all things. Can I read this? I must read this before I close. Cannot go around. Cannot go around. Oh, you cannot go around. The Torah of Yah. Oh, you cannot go. Cannot go around. Cannot. Go around the Torah of Yah. Two verses, two khatuv. I want to read. A khatfe, I want to read before I close. Dawi says that that your Sadiqya to Helium 119 and verse 142. That your your Sadiq, your Sadiqa, your righteousness, your characteristics. They are an everlasting, everlasting righteousness. He says, and thy Torah is the truth. So we know the truth. You cannot, there's nothing stronger than the Torah. That's why the enemy is raising up these lying dogs, these bastard slips. And they're trying to take things in the renewed covenant because they have no knowledge of it. And saying that we, you don't need that because this is what Shaul said to Galusia. You are a damn fool. You just don't understand the book. And they're ignorant. His name is Haya. Well, you are a stupid jackass. You just don't know anything. You can tell you easily seduce. You believe anything you hear. You don't study to master anything. You don't even know how to spell the word Haya. They, they can't even tell you how to spell it. Spell it. Oh, I know how to spell that. It's easy for me to understand the Hebraic words to spell them. I can spell them better than I can the English words. 
And he says also here, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here in Tehillim 1, same chapter and verse 151. Hallelujah. Let me read these two. Am I closing? Zachin Mahalaya would say. Zakin Yaramaya would say. He says, You, O Maria, thou art near, close, O Yah. And he said, And all thy commandments, your mitzvah, are truth. That's what truth is. His commandments are strong, man. Come on, Yisraya. All your commandments, are they truth or some? All of them are truth. So you can't deny the Shabbat. You can't take his name in vain. These are liars and they're going to die in their stupidity of wickedness. For they're willingly ignorant. They willingly reject his name. He said, concerning your truth, your testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. They never change. The testimonies of Yah never change. It is his Torah. May Yah rock you Let us stand to our feet. Ah, we're going to dismiss today. We shall turn toward Yerushalayim in all things my Abba. In the precious name of Yahshua HaMashiach, you have been great today. Your Torah is great. Great is the Torah of Yah. We rock you for, uh, for the simplicity. We pray for all Yisraya, every house that join us. Uh, even our enemies, that your Ruach be poured out conviction. And that you may strengthen your people. We need you today. We pray that you will grant unto your people scattered abroad the needs. We pray for Yerushalayim. We brach Yerushalayim. We brach Yisraya scattered to every nation upon the face of the earth. We told you for all things. We're glad that our Achmikaya, you brought him through with great resounding strength in the midst of these battles. And I understand, Yah, I am not insensitive to things that transpire, Yah. So we are glad of that. He and Mikael and Tisavaniah brought them all and all of our friends and all of our listeners, Yah. We just, we just brought you for all of them. We told you for all those, the faithful ones here. And those over the years have been faithful, especially here. My Ach, each of them, they're all are vitally important. Strengthen them all and strengthen us as we go from this place. You have blessed us much today. We pray, especially for your people in the places of the earth, in Russia, China, on the continent of Africa, and every nation there, in China, wherever they are, yeah, in the land of Yisraya, in every place, we pray for Yisraya, your people, to touch and look upon them. They're scattered abroad, the nation, under every umbrella of skin complexion, yeah, we pray for the elect, the here of Yah. We ask it all in your Yeshua's mighty name that you will strengthen us all, that our hearts may delight in your Torah above all things. We ask it all in your Yeshua's mighty name, and with our voices we cry, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.